I honestly feel like I am taking crazy pills here. My entire family is furious with me over this and I don't even know what to do. I sprained my ankle 10 days ago, only 5 days before my daughter's wedding. It was really, really bad. Like so bad that just walking to the bathroom even with crutches is intensely painful and difficult. I thought that maybe, possibly I would be better by my daughter's wedding, but on the day before I realized there was just no way I would be able to go. I would be a burden on absolutely everyone and the chances of me falling down and making a disaster of myself were too high. I thought people would understand after all my daughter saw me in the hospital and was super worried. Instead, basically, everyone is super pissed off at me. My ex-wife was basically screaming at me over the phone, telling me to man up and get on my feet and go. My sister was telling me that she sprained her ankle and was fine soon after, I remember that, it wasn't nearly as bad of a sprain. My daughter apparently was incredibly sad, but said it was okay because she knew I was in pain, but then, later on, was apparently upset with me. My son just said he was very, very disappointed that I couldn't just handle the pain and go. I think I got like 15 calls and a bunch of texts saying I need to go. Oddly enough the only person who understood was my son-in-law, who texted me saying that he understood why I didn't go, and he's sorry everyone was being mean to me. He got someone to record a bunch of videos of the wedding to send to me which was sweet. I can barely even walk on it. Like it all, even with crutches it's incredibly unstable and really painful. With the crutches, I still have to lift the leg, which causes the ankle to go into extreme pain because it's holding my foot in the air. I don't even know what I can possibly do to tell them how horrible this is for me, they all already know, they saw me in the hospital and it had only been 5 days since then. It's not like I could have gotten a wheelchair on such short notice, and even besides that the wedding was on a beach with stairs leading to it. I understand being upset I couldn't go, but it feels like everyone is specifically blaming me for this, as if I have any control over this. They all think I should have just screwed up the pain and gone. From what I can recall, neither my wife nor my son has ever had any kind of mobility injury like this. It's not the type of thing you can just screw up, it's literally an impossibility for me to do most things. I am almost sure that I am not a bad person, but seriously, am I the idiot here? You are the idiot. Your daughter only gets married once, hopefully. Rent a wheelchair, I understand it was the beach, but surely, for the dad of the bride, they could have come up with some solution. A wagon. A sled. Anything. Also, hospital for a sprained ankle. I think you're being a bit overdramatic. My dad cut his thumb off on the day of and made it to my graduation and my sister's graduation, which were on the same day in two different locations. I'm sure you could have managed to sit in a wheelchair. Sorry but you are the idiot. It's your daughter's wedding. I understand you are in pain, but man it's your daughter's wedding. If my dad could have been alive for mine I know an ankle wouldn't have kept him from it. You could have planned better, take medicine to help with the pain and power through it. Sorry, but we do that as parents all the time. You missed the biggest day of your daughter's life. I don't care how bad the sprain is you weren't dying or in the hospital. I have known many many people with sprains and broken bones and they show up still. Not the idiot. Pain is pain. It sounds like OP explored all options that wouldn't further risk his health. The beach was inaccessible due to long stairs and lack of wheelchair availability. I fractured my ankle too. Missed family holidays because of it. They were okay about it. Don't dismiss pain just because of a wedding. Or because it's a man. All of you talk about powering through pain when based on this description, it could have made the sprain much worse. When you're on painkillers and in pain and generally struggling, the brain is hardly working on full cylinders during that time. I had my eldest daughter at 16 with my high school girlfriend who was 19. I wanted to have a family and yes, I was really dumb. We got married really young, but we got divorced because I found out that she was sleeping with another man who was much older. He had the money, I was not financially secure. She got custody and I got visitation. This continued for a while, but he had the money to pamper my daughter and my finances were not that great. By the time she was 14, I don't know what happened, but my daughter opted for optional visitation. It simply meant that I could only see her if she wanted to see me. That never happened. Around that time, I was just starting to do well for myself and I decided to move away because I could no longer take it. I had to accept the fact that she didn't want to see. 
I tried to contact my ex for information and pictures, but I was simply told that I was infringing on their privacy. Eventually, I gave up and I moved on. I just understood that I had to be financially strong. I concentrated on my real estate business that and I did really well for myself. It's been years now and I'm really happy. I own a very successful real estate firm and I'm married now with a daughter. I owe everything to my wife and my best friend who were really supportive. When my eldest daughter was starting college, my ex contacted me and told me that she was divorced. She asked me if I would help with my daughter's college expenses. I gladly helped because I no longer had any financial woes. I also gave her a graduation present, a lump sum to get her started. So she surprised me with a party yesterday. And she was there. She's 25 now. We had a chat. She apparently missed me so much. She was sorry and she never knew that the money came from me. I don't believe that. I told her it was not an attempt to reconcile and I was only doing my duty and walked out. My wife tells me that my daughter deserved a chance and I had to take the high road. But it's just too much for me. It's beyond repair and serves no purpose. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. It's weird to try and reconnect after so long with a surprise party. It's weird that your financial support was mentioned. I have to question motives in regards to whether they're genuine or finance based. Your daughter has had a long time to reach out on her own. I think that you need to walk a fine line here. If the mom has divorced her meal ticket, then she may be looking for a new one and using the kid as bait. The kid is surely old enough, but spent her entire life exposed to that line of thinking and lifestyle. She could share the same sentiment. You're the idiot. When I was a 14-year-old girl I wanted to hang out with my friends and not my parents. So combined with schoolwork and extracurricular activities, she may have had a lot of demands on her time and may have just been a typical teenager. You then decided to move away and wanted information from the ex rather than calling the daughter regularly. So of course you making an effort by paying for her future could be seen as an attempt at reconciliation. You were the idiot for walking out of the party, she made an effort, and you threw it back in her face. Not the idiot. You paid for her college. That was out of plain kindness, you had no obligation to. If she wants to throw a party and act like everything is all good after you've started a new life, that's not how it works. You can't budge yourself into someone's life after neglecting them for so long. And don't get me started if you say she was 14, kids her age, I'm 14, can perfectly think for themselves, she has to own up to her actions. At this point, it's your call if you want to create a relationship with her OP. I say try and go for it, but don't feel you have to. I'm 16 and living with my dad and stepmom. They have a baby who cries all the time, and it's driving me crazy. I have trouble sleeping as is, I have a lot of school stuff to focus on during the day, and I can't do any of that when the house is so noisy. So I've started going out whenever my stepsister is having a fit and I want some quiet. We've got a house way out in the country, so some of the best places to go nearby are the forest out back, the old boathouse on the lake, we don't have any boats, the old owners of the house did, but it's a solid building on the lake. The lakeside, the raised hunting stands up some trees in the property, etc. And I have made the boathouse attic into a study room with a desk and my books, I sometimes sleep in the boathouse, or the old covered hunting stand, I sleep well outside, I camped a lot as a kid. And I recently had a big fight with my dad who said he didn't like it that I was walking out of the house all the time. He accused me of sneaking off to see some boy, which is a totally ridiculous idea. I'm single as anything and too shy to get a guy if I tried. I told him I was only getting out of there because he and his wife couldn't get their kid to chill. I needed to sleep somehow and needed to get my homework and hobbies done. And my dad was pissed off, saying she's not his wife, she's trying to be a mother to me. And we need to stay together as a family, not have me go off to the woods or the boathouse whenever it's not convenient. And babies cry, that's just what they do. But to be honest I'm just trying to wait it out till college and do good at school. Am I the idiot for getting out of the house so much? Not the idiot, you're 16. You don't need a step-parent trying to be a mother to you, and crying babies are stressful in the best of times, let alone when you're trying to study and have things you need to get done. It's not your baby, your dad needs to understand it wasn't your choice for your stepmother or half-sister to come into your life, and therefore as long as you're not causing trouble, you should be able to be independent of them. 
Sure, stay home and spend some time with your family, but don't let them affect your studies. Not the idiot. Just give someone a heads up you're leaving, but ultimately you're not responsible for an adult's happiness, and when is your leaving not convenient? You're a teenager and it is not your job to look after the baby or the adults in the house. New babies are hard work and if I was your new stepmother, I would probably be relieved that you weren't seeking attention and kind of doing your own thing at this period in time. Your dad is living in a fantasy land if he thinks his teenage child has any interest in caretaking or in a baby. Not the idiot. It's not your kid I'm guessing you had no say in its creation. It's also not your responsibility to be the primary care provider for it either. If the kid is screaming and crying and it's impacting your ability to get school work done, then it seems perfectly reasonable to seek out peace and quiet. When you get the in babies cry, that's just what they do from them, come back with yes, and that was your choice to make, not mine. But since you made it I now have to live with the consequences. I'm a freshman in college living in a co-ed dorm. Last night a girl who doesn't live in our building Samantha was visiting her friend Jennifer. I know Samantha and Jennifer because my roommate Ben will sometimes invite them to our room to hang out. I was playing 2020, but I was getting ready to go to sleep after I finished my game. It was like 1am when I heard knocking on my door I ignored it because if it was Ben he'd just open the door he wouldn't knock and no one besides Ben needs to be in the room at 1am. The knocking stops and I hear my door opening and Samantha and Jennifer walk in. For context, I leave my door open because Ben has a habit of not taking his key with him or he'll leave it at the place he was at. They ask me where Ben is at and tell me that they've tried calling him but that he wasn't picking up and I tell them that he's at another building hanging out with friends. They tell me that Samantha has to get back to her building because Jennifer's roommate wants to sleep, but that Samantha doesn't feel comfortable walking back by herself, so she wanted Ben to walk her. Since Ben wasn't there they wanted me to do it. I told them that I was tired and that I had a test at 9.00. They kept pleading with me but I refused. Her building is probably like a 15 or 20 minute walk just to get there and I'd also have to come back to my room. They called me an idiot because I was already up and Samantha's safety was more important than me sleeping. They pointed out a lot of incidents that have occurred since school started and said that this could happen to Samantha. A lot of these incidents happened to be homeless people asking students for food from the dining hall, but there was a girl who reported a stalker. After about five minutes of arguing Samantha says that she'll walk by herself. I told Ben about the incident in the morning and he and a lot of friends agree that it wasn't my responsibility and that Samantha should have left sooner, but Jennifer and some of the girls on our floor think I was being insensitive and that I don't understand the fear that women face just waking late at night. Not the idiot. You can tell they were making things up as they went along when she came to visit her friend, she obviously hadn't checked that Ben could in fact walk her home and left it till 1am to check. This is so ridiculously irresponsible of her. No one blames her for being scared to walk home by herself, but if that's the case, you plan for it. You don't leave it to the moment you want to leave and to the time when you can't walk home by yourself to check that you can still get home that way. Not the idiot. Even if you remove the context of it being on a college campus, imagine being in your own home and one of your guests expects you to drive them all the way home. What they forget is that you then have to come all the way back, so their 15 or 20 minutes is actually more like 30 or 40 minutes for you. We're all adults, either plan how you're going to get from A to B better if you're going to be out or don't be out late. Simple as that. As a person, I should take first responsibility for my own safety not make it someone else's. Not the idiot. You, as a male, are not responsible for the safety and protection of all female life. I hate that idea. If she was really concerned, she would have arranged for someone to act as her escort earlier. It's messed up that they tried to guilt you into it by talking about her safety. She could take steps to protect herself if she really wanted to. She could make sure she gets back to her dorm at a reasonable hour if she's afraid to walk by herself at night. What she can't do is make her problem your problem simply because of your gender. I live in a pretty small town, so if you don't know somebody directly, you're likely to know a person who knows them, and this is pretty much biting my back right now. My husband and I are looking to upgrade homes given we're planning on expanding our family, so we've been looking at a few open houses recently. About a week ago we were at an open house when our daughter, 4, wandered off and picked up this mask type thing laying out on a table. 
super bright, very loud, apparently very fragile, and pretty much right out in the open. When I saw her touching it, I told her to put it down, but it was too late, and somehow it had gotten cracked down the middle. Now, I'm not sure if it was already broken, and they had left it out as some sort of trap, because who leaves something bright like that lying around during an open house, with children walking around, or if she did anything, but I felt extremely embarrassed, and grabbed my daughter, and told my husband it was time to leave. A so-called friend of mine who knows the house owner saw me there, and apparently told her she saw me rushing out of her house on the same day she returned to find the mask broken. Now she's hitting me up on the phone demanding I pay her back for breaking art and naming an absolutely ludicrous price, think four figures. I'm absolutely not going to pay her that, but a few people I know think I'm in the wrong here. I personally think if you're having an open house that children will be visiting you don't leave expensive breakables out in the open. I also do not believe for a second that thing was worth thousands of dollars, and if it was, I think there's a very good chance she broke it herself, then left it lying around to pin it on someone else and guilt some money out of them. Who's the idiot here? You are the idiot. You were in someone's home, and it was on you to watch your kid. Otherwise, whatever she breaks is your responsibility. Get a toddler harness or something. Also, why did you just leave without even trying to apologize? It's also very unlikely that a woman trying to sell her house left out something that was broken, hoped a kid would handle it, and then she could hit people with a bill. It's way more likely she was displaying something nice because it made the house look posh, the way people put fresh flowers in a house they're trying to sell, and your kid broke it. You are the idiot. I have a feeling you know very very well your daughter broke some very expensive piece of art and you're acting entitled just to get out of it. The homeowner is still the homeowner and can leave his or her expensive art pieces to attract possible clients wherever she or he pleases. You literally stepped on someone's property, your kid broke something and now you're making them responsible for that. Don't bring your kid on someone else's property if you can't be responsible enough to watch her and make sure she doesn't break things. You are the idiot. If you can't control or watch your own children, don't bring them into other people's homes. They aren't obligated to childproof their houses against your four-year-old. The fact is that you're trying to shift the blame to the owner and unironically suggesting that them displaying their own property in their own home is some kind of trap. Your kid broke the thing, it was your fault for failing to impress upon your child that they don't play with things in other people's houses and for failing to physically stop your child from breaking someone else's stuff.